Hello everyone, this is Pichilin Calagiana Moroto and I am with Rostom Galanido and today we are going to share our personal experiences and how barriers have affected the delivery of information in interpersonal communication. So what is interpersonal communication, Rostom? Thank you, Pichi. So basically, um, interpersonal communication is about two people communicating with each other. Um, this is a discourse between two people wherein they convey their feelings and the meaning by which they are doing through verbal and nonverbal communication. Speech? Yes, and speaking about communication and conversations, a lot of us have experienced interpersonal communication because this is how we live and how life works in a daily basis. We communicate in order to send messages or information, uh, we respond, we interpret messages, and of course, to learn new things as well. So today, we are going to be sharing our personal experiences and how these barriers or factors have affected the, deli the delivery of information. So, Rostom, I, I'm very happy to hear, I will be very happy to hear your experience about interpersonal communication. So, what is your experience and how does these barriers have affected uh, your way of communicating and how your uh, how people you communicate respond to your message? How does this affect you? Um, thank you for that, um, Pichi. So, actually, one of the one of my experiences, one of the barriers that um, mm -hmm. I could consider in this experience is the personality uh, differences. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one of my experiences within this um, this barrier is that when I talk to a massive number of people, a, a lot of um, a lot of people in front of me. We all know that talking in front of people could um, shake you. Should they shake you a bit, especially if you're holding a microphone. Am I right? Yes. Mm -mm. So, I you can deny that even those who are um, experts with um, talking to a massive number of people, they sometimes shake, no? Mm -mm. Um, well, it's, uh, in some times when I talk to a lot of people, I really... And I, I really felt nervous. I, I don't know what what to say sometimes. Um, uh, let's, uh, I often get lost to what should I uh, what should I say because I am afraid if uh, I am afraid what will people uh, tell about me? What will people um, comment about me? Uh, my uh, my statements, because nowadays people are very much, uh, let's say, uh, let's say, they are an observer. They are mm -hmm. a keen observer. Yes. They they could critique a lot. They could uh, make criticisms via so even in social media. So I really, um, I am really careful with what I say and. Mm -hmm. Along with it, I am very much afraid because uh, people have different perspectives. What yes. if people would not uh, like or agree with my perspective and they would rush into their social media and talk about my um, statements, mm -mm. Uh, not knowing my side. So I am very much afraid that. Um, so one of the impact that could... Uh, um, give that to me is I could get stressed, I could uh, be, uh, I could lo uh, lose my focus anymore. So, um, however, what I do to make, um, uh, let's say, to fix some things as that, uh, to fix uh, things that, uh, to fix things that would make me afraid but to enlighten myself or to prevent myself from 
um, being afraid to talk yes. uh, in front of many people is that first I prepare myself mentally and psychologically. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, another one is I make a lot of research. I make um, I solidify my statement so that people would not have a let's say a burning argument with me because I really don't want any burning. I don't mm -hmm. really want a, an argument that would really you know break our relationship. You know, yes. with, with mm -hmm. one another. I really don't want that so I really solidify my my case, my statement so that in, um when I deliver it I can have confidence. I will have a I will be confident enough to speak because I know that my statements are based on facts. Uh, another one is that I really pray to God before going in front of many people, I I sometimes put coins, <laughs> put coins <laughs> um, under my foot. <laughs> because they say uh, uh, some uh, beliefs, I, I respect that. Um, some beliefs say that if you put a coin under your foot, uh, you would not feel afraid. And I'm not afraid anymore. Mm -hmm. So, and um, another one is. I really take the challenge. That's the most important thing. You take the challenge. You experience it. You you um, explore what will happen. Yes. And upon exploring that um, challenge, you would learn something, right? Yes. So upon I learning that, you would gain more confidence. So next time, so the next time you in front of many people, you would uh, be comfortable enough. So, so, so to wrap up, um, all you have to do is to prepare, to, to solidify your statements, to mm. pray. Um, it's, it's optional if you put a uh, coin under your, <laughs> under your foot. Um, and another one, uh, to pray, yes, to pray, then um, take the challenge. So, mm. so far, that is my experience on how I fix such barrier. So, thank you, thank you, Peach. So, I guess it's your turn to to share your experiences mm -hmm. and how did you manage to to um, overcome those challenges. Yes. Peach? Yes, thank you so much, Ros. That was very well said. Thank you so much. I know many can relate, including myself. And many can also be inspired with your words. That was really inspiring and very motivating. Um, to me, um, uh, my experience naman with interpersonal miscommunication concerns with um, the language differences. You know, I was raised in a family wherein my mother is from is a Dapitanon, so she speaks Bisaya, while my father is from Leyte, so technically he speaks a slightly different language or dialect. Um, um, and although he knows and speaks um, Bisaya naman, he has still trouble elaborating his thoughts in Bisaya. He would use his terms, his own terms and phrases that were used in his hometown. He, um, and when I was younger, I don't know what those phrases and terms mean. And I would even feel nervous talking to him because of the language difference we have, which um, consequently initiates confusion not only to me but to the rest of the family members in the house because we don't know what those terms or those phrases mean. Um. And in that case, this is where miscommunication starts. And when it takes place, um, misinterpretation and misunderstanding follow. As a result, I would receive his, you know, his complaints. Now, why am I not listening? Or why am I not doing what he asks me to do? Or why, <laughs> yes, or why am I not answering his question right away? Because honestly, I was still in the process of, you know, calculating you know, reconstructing the sentence and 
yes and re you know reinterpreting it in order to fully understand before i answer he would even raise his voice at me thinking that <laughs> i cannot hear him well when in fact i can yes i just couldn't understand what he is trying to say so from that experience um knowing that interpersonal communication in interpersonal communication we are both senders and receivers of the message i learned that in uh, being a sender alone to be understood by the receiver you must really ask for feedback um you must you should ask if you are audible if the receiver or someone you can you talk to hears you clearly Aside from that, uh, you should we should also adjust our voice, the volume of, of our voice, the distance of the person we are talking to, uh, not too high, not too low, just enough for the peop- the person we talk to can uh, hear us loud and clear. And as for the recipient, uh, we must also. Okay, that was one of the example of interpersonal miscommunication. <laughs> oh, that's okay. And that was just one of the examples of, you know, interpersonal miscommunication via phone call. <laughs> so, you, you are in the recipient. Yes, thank you. So, as for the recipient, uh, I think we should also, being the recipient or the receiver of the message, we should also practice the art, char the art of paraphrasing or repeating what the sender has said in order to clarify and avoid confusions. And one must also engage in, you know, active listening. We must actively listen to avoid misinterpretation of the message, because you know sometimes at some point. We are caught or we are distracted with extra noises in our surroundings that we forgot or we that hinders us to digest what has been delivered, which as a result, result we misunderstood or we even did not get the exact message. So that was yeah. my experience. <laughs> well, more to one page. But I guess, um, I think this is this is a closing, I guess. Yeah. So, um, again, Mom Peach, um, thank yes, you. Thank, thank you, you so much, Sir Ross. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Um, to our listeners out there, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, to God. To God. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for guiding us today, for enlighten, for, for the enlightenment, yes. for sharing, uh, for, for us to share and to learn. Um, learning. So, and thank you. Special acknowledgement to Teacher Mary, yes. Mary Suasula, for for having this activity with us. This is very much engaging yes. and entertaining. I am very much entertained. Uh, so I guess that would be all on beach.